little bit of a down news week, but one little gem came across, which was just simply that tickets went on sale for Connor versus Cowboy. They sold out in, I quote, minutes. I don't know how long that was, but minutes. I've heard this broken down, but we sold out within one day. Or, or even, we sold out with one within one hour. This was in minutes. So I'm only left to assume that it was in even less than an hour. By the way, they did a $10 million gate. Now, let me put that in perspective for you, okay? When I fought Anderson, so I'm going to personalize this, but when I fought Anderson the second time, we set an all-time record for gate, an all-time mixed martial arts record, 7.4 million. These guys did 10 million in minutes. That is a roughly off the top of my head, 40% increase. I didn't find Anderson all that long ago. That was 2012, seven years ago. They upped revenue 40%. I mean, that is a really tremendous job to everybody involved. Cowboy gets credit on that. Connor gets credit. The organization gets credit. The fans get credit. I mean, this is a big deal. So it does answer a couple of questions. Though. For some reason, there has been a dialogue and a narrative out there that has been existing. Does Connor still matter? Is Connor still the man? You guys will remember when that one came up. And a lot of it had to do with, hey, are people frustrated and annoyed with Connor? I mean, he got in some trouble, right? There was the, the old man in the bar incident and the, whatever it happened. Are they frustrated with Connor? So I think when people were bringing that question up, the answer was yes. I think that Connor's star did dim a little bit. I mean, that's just basic physics. Anything that goes up must come down. So yeah, he... He, he could go up and down and maybe he was in a little bit of a down, but I do think the lesson that we've learned is that somebody has to be in the forefront to be relevant. That's just this sport. There's a reason that we constantly jump. It seems week to week, we are who the greatest fighter in the world is, whether it's at a weight class or the pound for pound or just the all time bet. Whoever we saw last is what we seem to remember. And you will have guys that are able to apply the laws of supply and demand, the number one rule in all of economics. And I think that Connor fits that bill right now. There is a bit of demand because the supply is low. So was he in a little bit of a rut? And this is a rut by Connor standards. This is a tremendous athletic international superstar by his own standards. Was he, did his light dim a little bit? Yeah, I think that would be fair to say. But make sure you observe that the second he raises his hand and steps back to the table, that light comes back on. We have proof of that. Fighters lie. People lie. Numbers don't lie. A $10 million gate in minutes, by the way, at the same venue that they just played. Colby versus Kamaru just happened in the same venue. I mean, generally, you got to put some space in between that. You got to put some miles. There's a reason the act goes on the road. Elvis didn't just play the same building. Sammy Davis didn't just play the same building. You got to put some miles in between there if you want to be able to draw again. It's a very big compliment, but it also does psychologically answer a lot of the questions that many people had. Many of the pundits had, will the fans come back? Will the fans come to the table for Connor again, or are they frustrated? Now, I think that answer was very obvious. I never weighed in on that. I follow the history of the sport, but I also follow the psychology of the sport. I find the psychology of the sport ever bit as interesting as the sport. But I'm rare in that, apparently. Apparently, that's something unique about me. Because when the pundits were asking the question, of course the fans are going to come back. And it doesn't just apply to Connor. Connor is a bit of an anomaly, but it does not just apply to Connor. There seems to be many people that are trying to say there's too much daylight between George St. Pierre's performance over Michael Bisping and a pending return of GSP. There's not too much daylight. George will fill that gap instantly the second he raises his hand and applies for a license. I'm just saying it's a very interesting thing. Very interesting. I think many people have done this with Ronda Rousey. While Ronda Rousey is not going to return ever, and George most likely will return in 2020, Connor is going to return in a number of weeks. Ronda is not going to return. 
but to use her as an example, that would be another one who even if she left and you wanted to talk about the career or the way that she left or went over to the, anything that you wanted to say to try to bring Rhonda down, the truth is she could bridge that gap instantly. She really could. And I wonder how many other athletes out there are like that. I wonder how many people of yesteryear or even last year stepped away but, but could come back and could still make a splash. Maybe it's in MMA, but maybe it's in the world of boxing. Maybe it's in judo. Maybe it's in basketball. Maybe it's in tennis. I'm just, it's a very interesting thing. And to make believe that because somebody went away that they can't come back and come with a springboard and spring and catapult right back into those same marquee positions that they left off, it's a stretch. It is helpful to stay busy. It is helpful to be in somebody's mind. And this isn't just with athletics. You'll see this within Hollywood. If an actor goes away for a while, that actor's next film isn't always a must-see blockbuster hit. It doesn't work that. They need to be out there. They need to be seen. They need to remind people of why they're an action star or why they're a comedy genius. They need to remind people. It's a very true thing. So if Connor is in the process of the reminder phase, and he could do 10 million in minutes. What's it going to be like if he gets a win and springs right back into title contention? I mean, there's not a lot of places higher than you can go. A main event in Las Vegas is a very big deal. A main event in the UFC is a very big deal. A main event of a marquee fight of the first pay-per-view of the year that sells out in minutes for a record gate, a record gate for that venue, for this sport, that is remarkable. And I don't know all the gates off the top of my head. I know St. Pierre and Shields did like 11 million, sold a whole bunch of tickets out in Toronto. They did like 11 million. But these huge gates, I mean, another one comes off the top of my head is Connor. They did just north of 17. I think it was 17.2 million at Madison Square Garden the first time the night he fought Eddie Alvarez. That's the all-time record, 17.2, or it might have been even 17.4. That's the all-time record. The Khabib-Connor fight didn't even break that got high, got very, very high. I suppose that was at the same venue. So Khabib Connor probably is even bigger than Connor versus Cowboy. I had to go back and look at that, but I think you guys understand the point. The first record's to Connor, the second record's to Connor, the third record's to Connor, they all go to Connor. And I'm a guy who knows it because I had these records. I lost them all to Connor. I never won the championship. I wanted to be the champion. I never won the championship. So then what do you do? Well, you start to cling to what, whatever it is you did have. Right? You just kind of, you kind of start to cling to what, what did I do that was okay? I had the t shirt, I sold more t shirts than anybody. I had the live gate record, sold more live uh, tickets than anybody. I got crushed. I even had the pay per view record outside of UFC 100. I got, lost them all. Nobody to this day has beat me that isn't named Connor. But Connor's got three and four and five. He's got the gate, he's got gate one, two, three, four, and five. He's got pay per view one, two, three, four, five. It's, it really is a very remarkable thing. It is, and we haven't seen much Connor. We're not seeing Connor in the headlines. Have you guys seen him? Have you guys seen a show that he's popped up on? You guys turned on Sports Center and there's Connor McGregor? No. He's training. He is buckled down. He is focused. I mean, as this story starts to envelop, and I don't know how much time he gave himself. I trust he has been training longer than we have known. I trust that. But this fight just got made. Not only was Cowboy not in the equation, Quanter wasn't in the equation. They didn't have a show schedule. They didn't even have a venue booked or a ticket on set. They had none of the, all of this just came together. I mean, it'll be seven, eight weeks by the time they actually step into the cage. It'll be eight weeks from the time that we all found out about this, the venue was booked and it became official. It's not a ton of time. But for the time that he had, and from the evidence that we're given, which is just that we're not seeing a lot of Connor. We're not hearing any, any, no bad Connor Stork. Connor was out. Connor was in the whiskey brand. Connor's on the big media tour. We're not hearing these things. We're not hearing anything. Which leads us to believe, if you're to look at Connor historically, that he's buckled down. He's done this for some other fights, and I'm trying to recall which one it was. I think it was the Chad Mendez fight, but it wasn't supposed to be Chad Mendez. It was supposed to be Jose, Jose Aldo, Chad Slynn at the last second. But there was some show, some fight, where Connor refused to do media. And he lost that battle. He had to go out and do some media. But he got his schedule greatly lightened. And the only reason he was refusing isn't because he didn't want to be a team player. He's, he got, he's got practice. 
guys, I can either follow this media schedule or I can listen to my trainers. I got to listen to my trainers. If this match and this performance doesn't go well, this all comes to a halt. I need to be responsible. I need to understand that the result and the competition matters to everything else. So then he's getting lean. Oh, you got to do this meeting. You got to do this, this performance. You got to fly over here and you got to fly over here and you got to be in this outfit on this day and you got to do this photo shoot and you're in a different time zone. You're living out of a hotel. And by the way, your trainer's over here and your teammates are over there and your gym's in this country. It's a mess, but it's a balance that has to be done. You can't just turn your back on any of them. You can't just throw your hands up on any of them. But it is a pie, and you got to find out what percentage can I do here and what, what works for me and how can I still get my work in it. I just think some of the things that we're seeing from Connor are very positive for Connor because I do feel he's up against it. I really do. I know what the odds makers are saying, but guys, you've been out of the ring for a meaningful period of time. You're going in there with an active guy. Donald Cerrone hasn't just had four fights since Connor's last fight, Donald Cerrone had four training camps. He had four more experiences, four weigh-ins, four press tours, four times under the lights. One of those fights right off the top of my head, Ally Aquino went all five rounds. He might have had another fight. He's got a lot of rounds. A lot of things that help Cowboy. Plus, he got a 15-pound spot. I think that 15 pounds is very, very helpful for Cowboy. Aside just from the X's and O's of the skills, Connor likes to play the stand-up game. That's Donald's world. I mean, just from the X's and O's of the skills, I think now Cowboy got a 15-pound spot. If he could then also get an unfocused Connor McGregor, I mean, boy, it sure seems like the perfect storm right here. Perfect storm not only to catapult yourself, but to bury McGregor. I mean, there was a lot on this. There still is. And the fight's not here. We're just speculating, but we're starting to speculate with a little bit more evidence. Some of the pieces are starting to come into place. It's fun to say that he did $10 million in a couple of minutes. That's fun. That's not going to help him in the fight. Fact that he's not doing media, that's less fun for some of us. Connor's a good time. Connor's an entertaining guy. A little bit less fun for us, but maybe a little more responsible for him. So we can't just be greedy. We can't just say, come on, Connor, grab a microphone and get on that stage and entertain. Now we we got to let him focus on himself too. But I do think as this fight starts to get closer and some of the more information that we're having, I think you're going to start to see that line move a little bit. I think this fight starts to get a little bit more competitive as each day goes by. 